this is uh, the case of a, a 51 year old man that presented with subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, from a rupture of two cerebral aneurysms. You can see the CAT scan showing the diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage and hydrocephalus and placement of a ventriculostomy that was required to uh, lower the intracranial pressure. This is a CTA or CAT scan with contrast uh, demonstrating the, an aneurysm of the anterior communicating complex and a smaller aneurysm of the right middle cerebral artery bifurcation. The patient was taken to angiogram and uh, we can see uh, the opacification of the aneurysm of the anterior communicating complex. Uh, after identifying the aneurysm, we measure the aneurysm to uh, be able to size appropriately the uh, coil that we're going to be using for embolization. In order to embolize safely, we need to get uh, access to the uh, aneurysm and we use uh, for support not just a guide catheter that we were able to advance to a, a distal uh, uh, cervical segment of the left internal carotid artery, but also an intermediate uh, catheter. In this specific case, it was a DAC 038 catheter by 125 centimeters that we advanced to the uh, petrous cavernous segment of the left internal carotid artery. Uh, this is a patient that has uh, an uh, isolated hemisphere with bilateral A2s coming off the left ACA, and you can see how carefully we are being at the time of advancing a Prowler 10 microcatheter over a silver speed 10 microwire into the aneurysm. We're doing this very uh, slowly to prevent perforation of the aneurysm. Um, after uh, advancing the, the microcatheter into the aneurysm, then we go ahead and start advancing the coil. Uh, the measurement of the aneurysm was 4.5 millimeters in maximum dimension, so we uh, decided to uh, choose a four millimeter by six centimeter target 360 soft uh, coil. Um, and again, we are advancing the coil very slowly to prevent uh, perforation of the aneurysm. Um, also, the sizing of the coil is key uh, to so that we don't, number one, we don't rupture the aneurysm if we oversize. And, uh, and the coil, if it is oversized or undersized, it can potentially uh, protrude into the parent artery. And it's important to mention, uh, like I uh, uh, said before, the, the configuration of the anterior communicating complex in which uh, bilateral A2 segments of the anterior cerebral arteries are coming from this uh, uh, left uh, A1 and the anterior communicating artery. So uh, we need to respect uh, the parent artery and not allow any protrusion of a coil that can potentially lead to uh, uh, clot formation and potential uh, emboli. Uh, again, the, the microcatheter is very stable. Uh, definitely the, the advancing the guide catheter and using a triaxial system together with the distal access catheter made a big difference for support of the microcatheter. Um, after advancing that first coil, we were able to, uh, we do an, an angiogram in which we verify the position of that first framing coil. And you can see here that the coil is in the correct place. Uh, we ended up putting a total of uh, five coils into this aneurysm. Uh, we were downsizing from 4 millimeters to 2 millimeters, 1.5 millimeters, and then two 1 millimeter coils. And this is the, the DSA examination angiogram at the end showing obliteration of the aneurysm. Then we went to the contralateral side. This is the right uh, internal carotid artery angiogram in AP view demonstrating the small aneurysm of the right MCA bifurcation. Based on the hemorrhage, uh, pattern that we saw in cats and most likely the aneurysm that bled was the one in the anterior communicating artery but since the patient had a multiplicity of aneurysms and uh, the risk of having a hemorrhage from this uh, smaller aneurysm we decided to go ahead and treat it as well. You can see that we're uh, navigating the uh, microcatheter into the small aneurysm and uh, we, the, the coil that we chose was a 2.5 millimeter by 4 centimeter Cosmos 10 coil. Um, a spherical coil that uh, should uh, stay inside the aneurysm. But you can see how the coil 
is protruding into the parent artery and we had to remove the microcatheter and then use again the distal access catheter for better support. Now the distal access catheter is in the uh, distal M1 segment of the right middle cerebral artery and the same microcatheter that we use for coiling of the anterior communicating artery aneurysm we're using for this uh, for embolization of the right middle cerebral artery aneurysm. So it is the same Prowler 10 microcatheter. Uh, again, we're uh, in uh, advancing the uh, coil into the aneurysm and you can see a lot more stability uh, of the microcatheter. Uh, we see a one loop protruding, but just by pulling back uh, on the coil and again advancing into the aneurysm, if we're able to keep the coil mass uh, uh, outside the parent artery and occluding the aneurysm pouch. Uh, we uh, were able to place a total of two coils uh, into this aneurysm. The second coil was a Hypersoft 3D 2 millimeter by 2 centimeter coil and um, again advancing very slowly so that we don't disrupt uh, the position of that uh, first coil and we don't protrude into the parent artery. Uh, this is as the uh, the coil is advancing to the aneurysm. You see the DSA examination uh, showing obliteration of the aneurysm, and this was a good result for endovascular embolization.